Are your aquarium plants looking a little off color or not growing as they should? You're not alone. Many aquariums struggle with plant deficiencies that can turn a thriving underwater garden into a wilted mess. It's just like a symphony orchestra hitting a wrong note. A single nutrient deficiency can also throw off the entire performance of your plants. In this video, you'll learn how to detect common deficiencies in order to create a beautiful harmony. This is Canon in D major by Pakel Bell, a very recognizable tune. This is the song without any bass. Its depth and fullness are gone, thus affecting the core harmony of the music. Plants, like the melody, also require a balance of essential nutrients. Without nitrogen, old leaves will turn yellow and are reabsorbed from the bottom up. This is why you see many cases of bare bottom stems. In severe cases though, new growth would exhibit smaller and lighter coloration. Now, let's add the bass back and do something like this to it. All I did was delay the note by one quarter note of a single instrument. Horrible, isn't it? But how does this relate to a phosphate deficiency? I'm gonna fix this to save your ears before explaining things even further. Ah, that's better. Anyway, phosphate deficiencies can be similar to early stages of a nitrogen deficiency. Older leaves turn yellow, and parts are reabsorbed leading to dead patches. However, instead of a complete reabsorption like nitrogen, leaves can fall off rather quickly, and in some cases it may take on a darker hue. Now, back to the song again. I'm gonna change it a little. This still sounds horrible, and again, very noticeable. This next deficiency is quite similar in a way. Potassium deficiency is pretty easy to spot. Literally, old leaves will start to form tons of spots, or pinholes, that enlarge with a yellowing edge. The rest of the leaf could also start to turn yellow at the tips or the edges, but it can also look completely normal, apart from the pinholes, of course. Instead of using an untuned instrument, let's do this instead. Sounds pretty normal, right? Well, not exactly. I removed two violin parts. It's a little hard to notice without being notified. The same can be said for spotty magnesium deficiencies. The main symptoms are leaves exhibiting intervenal yellowing. In other words, darker veins with lighter leaf tissue. This could be considered that first violin part I removed. But what about the second one? That one can be related to an iron deficiency. The symptoms are slightly related to the symptoms of magnesium. It can have intervenal yellowing. However, there are times where the entire leaf can turn yellow, no matter if the leaf is considered new or old growth. As the song goes on, we get to the part where it really builds up, and up, and up, and then… nothing? Having a disrupted crescendo is kind of mental, or in other words, twisted. You see, calcium deficiencies exhibit twisted, stunted, and pale leaves that usually only affects new growth, which is why I gave the music rising analogy. However, if you do successfully treat the calcium deficiency, those misshaped leaves will still remain, and you will have to physically remove them. It's pretty obvious what you need to do to fix a deficiency. However, you will still need to be careful with how you add them and how much to add. For example, with a calcium deficiency, you can use aragonite, crushed coral, or even crushed eggshells in a filter bag. But you don't have full control of how much calcium gets added to the water column other than the quantity of substance you add to said filter bag. Also, using aragonite will increase pH, GH, and KH levels to a point where it may negatively impact aquatic life. There are alternatives that can give you better control, but you will need to do this with every water change, which can be costly depending on the volume of water being changed. This same concept goes for phosphorus, where adding too much can encourage algae growth. So when messing around with fertilizers, I believe testing one nutrient at a time will be beneficial as you know the impact of a single nutrient and not have to guess from the batch of them if something ends up going south. I know the topic of fertilization can be quite overwhelming, which is why I made a comprehensive guide on it that you can find over here.